Hi, and welcome to this view tutorial about smart clouds. Smart clouds are highly detailed procedural cloud materials with published parameters. They were modeled after real world cloud species and they cover many different clouds, from Cumulus to Stratus, Altocumulus, and Cirrus. Each cloud species is totally customizable with infinite random variations. In this tutorial, we will look at the most important smart cloud parameters that you will encounter in every material in one way or another and learn how to use them. To add a smart cloud, open the atmosphere editor and load a material from the smart clouds category. Let's start with the Altocumulus Undulatus material, which covers most of the sky. Clouds are complex to compute and to keep the computing overhead reasonable, I will lower the preview priority of the main camera preview with a right click into the preview and by setting the priority to low, the preview will take a bit longer to update, but it will make the application overall more responsive. To go to the cloud parameters, double click the cloud material to open the cloud material editor. You will find all the controls on the publish parameters tab. And these are the only parameters you need to edit the clouds. All materials were designed with proper shading settings and realistic values for altitude and height, so that there is no need to go back and forth between the atmosphere editor and the cloud material. If you want to play with the shading settings in the atmosphere editor, you still can, but just be aware that this might lead to unexpected results, because the cloud material takes the base values from the atmosphere editor and then performs further computations on them. Things you should absolutely never touch are cover, altitude variations, detail amount and feathers. These will break the shapes in the cloud material, so please leave them alone. Overall, we recommend you only use the published parameters to tweak the cloud unless you feel really adventurous. And by the way, changing the material scale has no effect at all on these clouds and this was done on purpose. Okay, so all these settings here might be a bit overwhelming at first glance. While each cloud material has different parameters, we made sure that the materials share as many parameters as possible. So once you learned what a parameter does in one cloud, you can be sure that the same parameter will do the exact same thing in another cloud. And all available parameters are also explained in the manual, so you can look them up if needed. The parameters are arranged in the order of workflow. You start with setting up some general properties for the clouds, then you define where the clouds appear in the presence group. Then you start shaping the clouds with main and secondary shape features. Then you adjust the shading settings. And finally, you can enable animation or prepare the cloud for export through a cloud zone. So let's start with the general settings. Each cloud has a maturity and dissipation slider. With these two controls, you can make a cloud naturally form, evolve, and also eventually disappear. If you keyframe these parameters, you can create time-lapse animations, but they are also really useful for still renders. For example, just decreasing cloud maturity a bit alters the look of the clouds a lot. Maturity is the development stage of the cloud. It doesn't just change the cover, but it also adjusts the cloud's height, the cloud's shape, the density, and a lot of small details. Cloud dissipation takes the current maturity stage and gradually makes the clouds die and disappear either through collapsing the clouds or making them dissolve into feathery fractus clouds or fading the clouds out. Both maturity and dissipation were designed individually for each cloud species after the real world. So how the cloud evolves or dies changes with each material. So with these two sliders alone, you can change the look and feel of the sky immediately. Now let's turn to the presence group. Here you can adjust the clouds cover. You should only use the cover setting here and not the cover setting in the atmosphere editor, because that one won't work correctly with smart clouds. When you switch the cover mode to random with gaps, empty areas where no clouds will appear are added, and you can control the size of those empty areas with the gap size slider and also randomize the gap placement. After you define the placement, you can shape the clouds with the unique parameters in each material. For example, in the Altocumulus material, you can change the average size of each Altocumulus cloud, or make the clouds clump together, or change the gap size between each individual cloud. 
Some clouds also have secondary cloud features or accompanying clouds that you can activate. For example, the undulate bands in this case. There are lots of settings for adjusting the bands width or whether they appear everywhere or in patches, how far the bands are apart from one another and much more. Once you're satisfied with the cloud shapes, you can turn to the shading group. Each cloud can be switched to a fast shading mode, which greatly simplifies the light scattering in the cloud. This speeds up preview renders quite a lot, and this is useful while you are still tweaking the main cloud shapes. Once you are satisfied with the cloud shapes, switch back to full shading, which will add much better light scattering back into the cloud. And in this mode, you can also adjust the density along the cloud's height with a filter curve, for example, or increase the shadow darkness in some cloud species, or select one of the pre-made shading presets based on the optical thickness of the cloud. And you can also add a gradient along the cloud's height, which is a quick way to fake sunset colors without needing to tweak the atmosphere. Now let's have a look at one of the cumulus materials, which creates a sky full of individual clouds. Materials with individual clouds include a few more settings in the general group. We already looked at maturity and dissipation, and materials with individual clouds offer two modes for both parameters. The same maturity or dissipation for all clouds, or random variations. When you switch to random variations, for example for maturity, each cloud will randomly deviate from the overall maturity setting, so that not all clouds have the same development stage. This introduces much more variability in the sky, because some clouds might be fully developed, whereas others might just have started forming. How much the clouds may vary from the overall maturity can be defined through the variation slider. The larger the value, the more variety in the sky. And of course, dissipation variations work the same. So when enabled, some clouds will dissipate sooner than others. Keep in mind that those clouds that started dissipation later than others might not be fully gone once dissipation reaches 100%. If you want to force a complete disappearance of all clouds, you can enable the force full dissipation checkbox, which will make those clouds that started their dissipation later eventually catch up with the other clouds, so that all clouds will be gone completely at maximum dissipation. Also, there is a checkbox for adding random dissipation during the maturity phases. When enabled and you move the maturity slider, some clouds will start to evolve, but then quickly dissipate again instead of evolving into a fully mature cloud. And this simulates atmospheric instabilities and makes time-lapse animations more realistic. Finally, some materials also have a global wind direction control, which influences into which direction the clouds stretch with the stretching slider and into which direction wind shear and storm effects occur. Because this setting influences the placement of the clouds in the sky, it is placed in the general group so that you can set up the wind direction first and then start tweaking the clouds without changing their placement anymore. By default, the wind direction is set to 90 degrees, which corresponds to the x-axis of the scene. So the wind is blowing from left to right. The wind direction is independent from the controls found in the animation group. Each smart cloud has built-in procedural animation effects, which is why the timeline appears automatically in the scene when a smart cloud is loaded. Depending on the cloud species, different animation effects are available. You can activate the effect you want to use, for example a drifting animation. Then set up the speed and direction in which you want the animation to happen, and that's basically all you need to do. No keyframes are required. When you scrub through the timeline and look at the camera preview, you will see how the clouds drift. The convection animation looks particularly nice and simulates the typical boiling look of cumulus clouds. Of course, you can also animate any of the published parameters through keyframing. And we have a separate tutorial about cloud export as static or animated VDP sequences, which shows you how to do this. There we also go into detail about the cloud export zone, which is made specifically for export purposes. So these are the most important settings to know to get started with smart clouds. Just play with the parameters and read about their effects in the manual if you want to know more. We hope you will enjoy the new clouds and will use them to create really nice looking skies and animations. 
If you want to learn how the materials were made, you can open the function graph and also take a look at the internal node network. And make sure to also check out the tutorial about the new multiple scattering in baked VDB clouds and the video for exporting animated or static clouds to OpenVDB. Thanks for watching and happy rendering. Thank you.